Are you, are you nervous about meeting LeBrew? Well, a little bit, of course. I don't know him, and I don't know what he's like. Or In August 2008, Lois Hall came to the Hudson Valley because she wanted to meet LeBrew Jones and put her mind at ease once and for all that he was either guilty or innocent. She always suspected he was innocent, but she wanted to look him in the eye and say, did you kill my daughter? This is the Otisville State Prison. See, they have horses here. That's... On a Saturday morning in August, Lois Hall and I got in the car and drove the 12 miles to Otisville. It was visiting day, but we had arranged in advance to meet with LeBrew in a private room segregated from the rest of the visitors and the population. But they don't stay We were met outside by a deputy superintendent, Louis Franco, and he brought us inside into this private room. We weren't allowed to bring a camera, but we sat down and waited, and Lois was a little nervous. I know she she was a little scared because after all this is supposedly her daughter's killer. And LaRue walked in the room and they took one look at each other, jumped into each other's arms and just embraced and burst into tears. It was totally unexpected on my part. They were like apologizing to each other. He's like, I'm so sorry for your loss and She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he said to her, you've been in prison all these years, too. He said, you've been in prison all these years, too. And they held hands. They sat back down, and they held hands across the table, leaning over, looking into each other's eyes, asking each other questions. Louis Franco, the deputy superintendent, he's like six foot four, big burly guy, I thought he was going to cry. I was crying. I know he was having a hard time holding it back. It was the most moving experience I think I've ever had. It was so poignant. Before we left, before we walked out, LeBru stopped and he looked at Lois again. And he said, I didn't do it. She didn't ask him, but he did. He stopped her and he looked at her. He wanted to say it again. But afterwards, she had a lot to say. He was very, very sad about that I lost my daughter. I could tell that he was um, genuinely sad about that. I can't imagine him doing the things that were done to my daughter. I can't imagine it. Not even that he was big enough to be able to do that, but that he didn't have that look in his eyes that could possibly have changed into someone horrible like who has done that, the person that did that. Where I've seen that look in people's eyes before and you say, oh, get me out of here, you know? But it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. Just can't imagine it, do, him doing that.